Julius Caesar, the man who became the dictator of Rome and whose death led to a series of events which resulted in the birth of the Roman Empire from the death of the Roman Republic, was once kidnapped by some pirates when he was 25 years old. Who were those pirates? Why did they kidnap him? How did he get out of that situation? Watch this video till the end to find out. In the 1st century BCE, the Mediterranean Sea was filled with seagoing bandits and pirates whose depredations terrified the Romans. The Cilician pirates were the ones who mostly dominated the Mediterranean Sea. They roamed around the rugged region of southern Anatolia which was known as Cilicia Trachea. They had many pirate strongholds in Cilicia and the term Cilician was long used to generically refer to any pirates in the Mediterranean. In 75 BCE, a 25-year-old Julius Caesar was headed to the Greek city of Rhodes to study oratory with some of his friends and servants. While he was sailing in the Aegean Sea, he was kidnapped by the Cilician pirates. They discussed it for some time and decided to ransom him for 20 talents of silver. A talent was the heaviest ancient unit of weight and in Rome. 20 talents of silver is about 620 kilograms of silver or $600,000 by today's silver prices. Caesar laughed at their demands and the pirates were confused, not knowing the reason for his laugh. Caesar then told them that they obviously didn't know how great the man they'd kidnapped was and demanded they ask for 50 talents of silver instead of 20 talents and said it was a very small ransom. The pirates were surprised by his demand, and they all agreed to it happily, thinking they'd soon be sailing at sea full of silver and wealth. This incident was recorded by the biographer Plutarch in his book, Parallel Lives. Caesar then sent some of his travel companions to gather the silver, which took 38 days to accomplish. In those 38 days, he was nearly alone with the pirates, only keeping two servants and one of his friends. Although he was living with his captors, he was the superior person there. He refused to be commanded and instead, commanded them. He even went so far as to demand they not talk whenever he decided to take a nap or go to sleep for the night. He also played games with them, not caring if he was invited or not. He spent most of his time writing speeches and poetry and also recited them to those pirates. When they offered their opinions about his work, he rejected them and said they were incapable of appreciating his work. He also called them illiterate savages. Soon, Caesar earned their respect and was granted more and more freedom to do as he pleased, both on the ship and in the islands they went on. On many occasions, he laughingly threatened to have them all hanged. But the pirates, of course, didn't take it seriously because the Roman Republic never tried to stop or punish the Cilician pirates for their illegal activities, since they operated the slave trade which provided the Roman senators with useful servants. After 38 days, the ransom of 50 talents of silver arrived from Miletus. The pirates became so happy and released Caesar to continue his journey. The pirates may have thought that Caesar didn't care much about his captivity and the ransom he paid, but Caesar, in his mind, was thinking of various ways to take revenge against them. He immediately manned some ships, gathered some sailors and troops and set sail from the harbor of Miletus against the pirates. The pirates were still on roads when Caesar returned, since they never took his threats seriously. He managed to capture nearly all of them and took back the 50 talents he gave as ransom along with their property as spoils of war. He arrested and imprisoned them in Pergamon, which is in the northwest of the modern city of Bergama, Turkey. He then went in person to Marcus Junius, the governor of Asia, thinking it proper that he, as praetor in charge of the province, should see to the punishment of the prisoners. But the governor said that he needed time to look into the case since it involved a considerable sum of money. Caesar asked him to carry out the punishment many times, but he kept saying the same thing. So he paid no further attention to him and decided to take matters into his own hands. He immediately went to Pergamon to carry out the punishment of the pirates. 
he took them out of prison and crucified them all as he had promised while in captivity, a promise which the pirates had taken as a joke. This sent a powerful message to the Roman world that no one should dare mess with the mighty Julius Caesar. But Caesar first had those pirates' throats cut before carrying out the crucifixion. Why do you think he did that merciful act? Was it because of the time he had spent with them and didn't want them to suffer that much, or for another reason? Let me know by leaving a comment below. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, tap the thumbs up icon and share this video. Hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell icon. I will see you again in a new video with a new topic to explain. Thanks for watching.